When it comes to extragalactic astronomy, 2022 was a great year. Not only did we get a glimpse of the most distant galaxies ever, we also discovered the farthest single star to date. The star has been named Irindel, and it might belong to a rare population of stars that astronomers have been hunting for decades. The light travel distance to Irindel is 12.9 billion light years, and the present proper distance, which considers the universe's expansion, is 28 billion light years. This means that if the Big Bang is true, the star existed when the universe was just 900 million years old. So Irindel is about 8.2 billion years older than the Sun and the Earth. The star was first discovered by chance using the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble first observed the star's parent galaxy that was gravitationally lensed by a cluster in the foreground. Gravitational lensing can magnify the objects in the background by factors of thousands. Because of it, the background galaxy containing Irindel appeared like an arc that the astronomers named the Sunrise Arc. But the team saw a bright objects sitting on the edge of the distorted galaxy. Luminous sources in distant galaxies tend to be highly energetic events, such as novas, supernovas, or tidal disruptions caused by black holes. These are transients that happen to change their brightness with time. However, Hubble's observations showed that the brightness of this object remained constant for over three and a half years. Hence, astronomers concluded it's a gravitationally lensed bright star in Sunrise Arc. Because of its wavelength limitations, Hubble could provide only limited information about this distant star. So astronomers used the James Webb Space Telescope in August to study Irindel's properties further. Webb discovered that Irindel is a B-type star with an effective surface temperature of 13,000 to 16,000 degrees Celsius. That's more than twice the surface temperature of the Sun. In addition, the far-flung star has a luminosity between 600,000 to 1 million times the luminosity of the Sun. This is what makes the discovery of Irindel exciting. It could break the famous Humphreys-Davidson limit or the HD limit in astrophysics. The HD limit is the impartial luminosity limit above which no stars have been observed, at least in the local universe. So, if Irindel is confirmed to be a single star a million times the luminosity of the Sun, we might have to reconsider the HD limit and place new constraints on it. Irindel's discovery is important because this might be the first observation of a Population 3 star that astronomers have been hunting for decades. Primordial nucleosynthesis produced two major chemical elements, hydrogen and helium. The first generation of stars known as Population 3 stars had trace amounts of metals and hence a low metallicity. In astronomy, any element other than hydrogen and helium is referred to as a metal. Astronomers believe that most of the Population 3 stars have died by now, and the remaining ones are pretty dim and difficult to observe. They are almost impossible to be seen naturally, and most candidates have been found in gravitationally lensed galaxies. So follow-up observations of Irindel are important, as they might reveal the nature of some of the first stars in the universe in detail. In 2006, NASA launched the New Horizons probe to explore the then ninth planet of the solar system, Pluto. After traveling for nine years, New Horizons reached Pluto and became the first spacecraft to visit the far-flung world. Today, the probe has crossed the mark of 50 astronomical units from Earth, that's more than 7.5 billion kilometers or 4.6 billion miles but data from the Pluto flyby are still being analyzed by astronomers. And in 2022, studies suggested that Pluto is alive and isn't as calm as it seems. The images of Pluto's surface have shown many bumpy volcanoes raised to different heights. And surprisingly, unlike the rest of the planet, there were no impact craters from asteroids or meteors nearby. In addition, 
There is no evidence of plate tectonics activity that plays a crucial role in mountain formation on Earth. All these factors together hinted that this surface was formed after a recent geologic disturbance, possibly a volcanic eruption. Scientists carefully studied two volcanic peaks on Pluto, Wright Mons and Picard Mons. After analyzing the images captured by New Horizons, researchers speculate that the formation of such a terrain must have been fueled by multiple eruption sites located near each other, and possibly the material ejected during the resultant cryovolcanic eruptions coated the entire region with layers of ice. But where does the heat required for volcanic activity come from? Pluto does not have much rocky material in its core to generate enough heat from radioactivity like the Earth. It does not even have massive neighboring objects that exert a gravitational pull on it, like in the case of Jupiter's moon Io. The only plausible scenario is that the dwarf planet still has leftover heat from its formation trapped within it, most likely in a deep water ocean beneath its icy crust. If cryovolcanism is still active on Pluto today, it will strengthen the possibility of finding a liquid ocean there. And who knows, maybe life too. 2022 marked the beginning of the James Webb era. The $10 billion infrared space telescope was launched on Christmas Day in 2021. It took a month to reach its destination, the L2 Lagrange point a million miles away, about five more months to calibrate and prepare for science observations. The first images taken by the James Webb Space Telescope were released on July 12th. They included the deepest infrared image of the universe so far, a detailed spectrum of the atmosphere of an exoplanet, a stellar nursery where hundreds of stars are taking birth, a dying star that has formed a spectacular ring of gas and dust around it, and a visual grouping of five galaxies in a new light. But apart from these beautiful pictures highlighting previously hidden details, Webb made groundbreaking observations in its early release science program. Since Webb is the most powerful infrared observatory, it can peer at those regions of the cosmos that even Hubble couldn't. As a result, Webb opened the windows to the first billion years and the last unexplored era in the history of the universe. According to the Big Bang model, star formation began about 150 million years after the universe began. Then in the first 500 million years, these stars formed the first proto-galaxies or clusters of gas that clung to vast, invisible dark matter structures. These proto-galaxies then formed the first galaxies of the universe. The entire process must have lasted about a billion years. But Webb's observations challenged this entire model. Astronomers say they should be seeing lots of these little proto-galactic fragments that haven't yet merged to make a giant galaxy. In contrast, they are seeing a few things that are already big galaxies. The super-early galaxies discovered by Webb in the first 200 to 300 million years of the universe have large stellar masses, high absolute UV luminosity, and a high star formation rate. If the formation of stars began 150 million years after the Big Bang, how did these massive galaxies form so early? What is driving the exceptionally high star formation in these primordial galaxies? Astronomers suspect that our star formation and galaxy evolution models might need serious revisions. Or we need to better understand the role of dark matter in the large-scale structure formation of the universe. The upcoming Cosmos Web program is expected to hugely increase the population of early galaxies by observing a wider area of sky for hundreds of hours. Astronomers expect to find thousands of such galaxies refining our database and enabling us to develop accurate models. Some estimates suggest Webb could see as far as a redshift of 26, just 120 million years after the Big Bang. If it turns out to be accurate, it would be a turning point in astronomy.
2022 was an important year in the field of study of wormholes. Wormholes are exotic objects which act like bridges between two faraway regions in space-time. They are hypothetical connections believed to be shortcuts between regions within our universe. They could also be connecting two different universes. So the entrance of a wormhole could be in one universe, its exit in the other, and the throat of the wormhole connects the two universes. Theoretically, they can connect long distances such as billions of light years and short distances of a few meters. The concept of wormholes was first introduced in 1935 as Einstein Rosen Bridges. In their paper, now known as ER, Einstein and Rosen discussed the possibility of a bridge connecting two distant points in space-time. But they found that such structures would be volatile and collapse if we tried to traverse them. In the same year, another paper was published in the field of quantum mechanics. The EPR paper was on quantum entanglement, which Einstein called a spooky action at a distance. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon in which it is possible to create a pair of particles in such a way that a change induced in one would impact the other, no matter where it is in the universe. For decades, physicists believed there was no link between quantum entanglement and wormholes. But in 2013, scientists proposed that ER is equivalent to EPR. This means that wormholes and entanglement are the same. That's a bold claim because one is linked with quantum mechanics and the other with general relativity. To test the claim, a group of physicists decided to design a quantum circuit that's mathematically equivalent to a wormhole. And when they did that, using Google's quantum computer, they found that ER is essentially EPR. Wormholes and quantum entanglement are essentially the same. That's an important result because combining general relativity and quantum mechanics has been a holy grail of physics. And this study has opened a new window to discover the same. On May 12, 2022, astronomers released the first picture of the supermassive black hole lying at the center of the Milky Way. It's located on the border of the Sagittarius and Scorpius constellations and is called Sagittarius A star. The supermassive black hole is 27,000 light years away and subtends at an angle of just 52 micro arc seconds in the sky. So imaging this black hole is like pointing the telescopes at a donut-sized object on the moon. It took several decades to master the technique involved in producing this image of the black hole. It's a significant milestone in radio astronomy and computational physics that lies at the heart of modern research. The image of Sagittarius A star was released based on radio interferometer data taken in 2017. Technically speaking, it's a picture of the accretion disk around the horizon of Sagittarius A star that took five years of calculations to process. And eight radio telescopes collected the data at six different locations. About 6,000 terabytes of data was produced, and if it were printed on paper, the stack would have reached the moon. A black hole's shadow is directly proportional to its mass. When astronomers calculated the mass by analyzing the image, it perfectly matched the theoretical values of 4 million solar masses. Hence, with this image, Einstein's general theory of relativity has passed yet another rigorous test with flying colors. Every Sunday, we release a video on the latest groundbreaking discoveries made in physics and astronomy. The videos of this series are created in a way so that there's something for everyone in them. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any video of the Sunday Discovery series.